Hello, and welcome back to the Tax Advisor and Biz Coach Success Podcast. The purpose of these episodes is to help entrepreneurs become more successful, avoid tax and other business headaches. Remember to tune in frequently as we will be sharing tips, secrets, and expert recommendations in how you can manage your finances, improve wealth, and grow your business. Please like, share, and subscribe. Here's your host, Liz Soria. Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome back to another exciting episode. This is your host, Liz Soria, the Tax Advisor and Biz Coach Success Podcast. Today, I'm really honored to have a really, really special guest. Uh, his name is Dr. Ben Ratter, and we're going to be talking about something that I think is really, really interesting for everyone. And one of the things is that how we're going to maintain a physical wellness is crucial for our health. Why we need to exercise, why we need to keep our bodies moving um, to keep a healthy uh, lifestyle because we do spend, as entrepreneurs and small business owners, we spend a lot of hours behind our computer and long hours that we work 10, 12 hours. I'm sure some of you might be sharing, you know, those long hours like I do. And why it's important to be physically fit and not only for our health, for many other reasons. So welcome, welcome, Ben. And tell us a little bit about why you got motivated of getting into, uh, you know, the physical exercise and being a trainer because you are a personal trainer. Is that correct? I teach at a university. I'm a personal trainer. And like you, I'm a podcaster. So like (laughs) you, I wear many, many hats. And part of it is because I'm really passionate and I really enjoy explaining to people the importance of being active in movement. My two podcasts, the ethos is movement is part of what makes your life complete. I don't think it matters whether you're an athlete, a businessman, a senior citizen, or even a kid. It's a lifetime habit that can just benefit everything, whether it's your interpersonal relationships, your ability to work at a job. And for those of us who do it on a regular basis, if you can find something that you really enjoy, Gosh darn it, it's fun to be kind of corny. <laughs> so is I it, got, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, that, that is so true. I, I agree. And, and one of the things is, well, but you came from loving it almost, I mean, if you technically think about it, you love exercising. Um, and this is what you got into into this kind of career. How, how what made you really choose that? Not only you love it for yourself, but you really wanted to get to help other people. Is that part of the reason why you have become certified and, and, and specialized in this? It is. I was an undergraduate. I majored in athletic training, which is the care of athletic tra- or care of athletic injuries and working with athletes. So if you watch the Dolphins play football and somebody goes down on the field and somebody runs out and kind of taps them on the shoulder, that's probably the athletic trainer. And after doing that for a couple of years, I'd always... Uh, been a knowledge geek just wanting to learn and I had a couple of mentors say you know you want to get your doctor so after working as an athletic trainer in a variety of settings for almost four years I left working and went to school full-time to get my PhD in exercise physiology and was fortunate enough to graduate with a doctorate in exercise physiology lived actually for four years in Lakeland Florida so north of you and (laughs) taught in a small college for four years And then I guess about 14 years ago, last month, I moved up to just south of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I teach at a local university, California University of Pennsylvania, which is kind of interesting. I teach entirely online, and I teach from home. In addition, I do some personal training on the side because if I'm going to teach the topic, I should be a practitioner. I agree. And like you, uh, about two years ago, I started a podcast and about eight months later started a second one, both of them with the ethos, movement is part of what makes your life complete. So I guess you can say I'm a lifetime mover. And as I get older, the more people I interact with, and as my family ages, I can see the difference between people who move on a regular basis and people who don't move. And the ultimate goal for all of us, uh, I'll tell a real quick story. Uh, My parents knew somebody when they were first married and she was 80 some years old and fell and broke her hip. And this was back in the 1950s, early 1960s. And what they did at that point in time is they said, well, you know, there's not much we can do. We don't want to do surgery on somebody who's so old. She lived lived to be over 100 years old, bedridden because of her hip with absolutely no dementia or anything like that. So that's, that's one end of the spectrum. And then I remember when I was in Florida, 
there was a gentleman who lived over in the Tampa St. Pete area who was in his 80s, did bike rides, did triathlons. And I remember reading he went out for a bike ride on one of the rails to trails on, I believe it was Labor Day, and fell off the bike and was dead when he hit the ground of a massive stroke. And when I would teach college health classes, I would say, that's phenomenal, that's wonderful. And all these 18 and 19 year old college students would look at me and go, why is he saying that? Right, right, right. Explain. I'm saying that because <laughs> the person, he didn't suffer. He was doing exactly what he wanted to do. And up until the day he died, he was doing what he wanted to do rather than being somebody who said, boy, I'd really like to do that, but I'm just not young enough to do it or I'm just not strong enough. So the movement allows us to do what we want to do, whether it's go for a bike ride or I can think of my dad who's in his 80s who's still practicing as an attorney. That, that's a nice story. I like that. And, and you know what? These are things that people, when you know, they're listening to this kind of podcast, they, they realize, again, it's about movement. It's about, it doesn't matter your age, even your condition. There's still some sort of exercise that we can do to help improve our bodies, right? And like exactly. you said, here, here's, here's a man who pretty much passed away doing what he loved. I mean, what, what greater thing than that? I mean, I, I think that uh, hopefully all of us, will, will, you know, we leave out of the space of earth that way, you know? Uh, but I mean, I think that's, that's really, really good. So one of the things that I wanted to ask you, and, and because you're an expert in this, um, what kind of tips can you offer? Let's look at people who are thinking that they want to get into the routine, because I think you have to convert it into a daily routine or a weekly routine, um, not to come up with excuses why we don't have the time, or perhaps I'm too tired, or there's always going to be something else that's going to take priority before I can hit the gym or before I can even do a run. So any things that you can recommend for someone who is thinking about it but probably has never got into the habit? I mean, any tips there that you can share with us, please? I think the first thing, just because of safety, go get a checkup from your physician just to make sure you don't have any underlying problems. Okay. Uh, the second thing is find or pick something that you enjoy. I'm somebody who really enjoys being outside. I hate group exercise classes and gyms. That's not because they're bad. It's just for me, if I have to pick the perfect way to move, I'm going to go for a bike ride. I'm going to go off in the woods with my dogs. I'm going to run. So I think number one is pick something that you enjoy. Number two, realize that, as you said, make it a habit. So figure out, are you somebody who is a morning person or an evening person as far as exercise? And that's going to depend on what your job is. That's going to depend on your family situation. Uh, I know for me, I'm a morning person. So if I say I'm going to exercise at 6 o'clock at night or 6.30 at night, it's probably not going to happen. And, and I stop I, you right there for a moment because for the ones that are listening, I'm an evening person. There you go. So we're opposite. So you can wake up early in the morning and maybe before you get started your day, you already need to work out. And I think that's really important. I'm glad that you brought that up. You know what? Uh, because a lot of people think, well, I have to do it in the morning. No, you don't. It has to do with, I think that we are wired differently. I really think we are, some of us. Uh, for example, and I will share my story now, if you don't mind, uh, is the fact that I, I, I cannot do it in the morning. I'm just not an early bird person. So therefore, I cannot picture myself going in the morning and going to the gym, which I do. And I do love taking classes. I do yoga classes. I'm a yogi. I, you know, I do spin classes, right? Bicycle classes that you don't go nowhere, <laughs> but you do the exercise. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, I also do dancing classes. So I do a combination. And I lift weights, too, and I do machines. So it's a combination because it's really important not falling into a plateau. Um, and that's something that has happened to me. But this is, look, an extreme. You like working out early in the morning and it works for you. For me, it works in the evening. The, I think the main factor here is knowing what works for you. Yeah, so I think what works for you, so pick a time of day. I think you hit, hit it on the head a few minutes ago. You said, put it in your schedule or make it a schedule and make it, I mean, some people, it's literally a matter of putting it in Outlook or the Google Calendar and then it goes off. It's like, oh, it's time to go rather than just saying, I'll fit it in somewhere because anything that you say, I'll fit it in somewhere, it's not a priority. 
So I would say that's a second tip. A third tip would be figure out if you're a self-motivated person or, and I say this in a positive way, if you want to have, be held accountable and have somebody guilt you into it. I know when I was in grad school, uh, I was training for Ironman triathlons and that involves a lot of long bike rides. And I had a riding partner where we would ride two or three days a week at five or 5.30 in the morning. So if you're getting up yourself, even as an early morning person to say, I'm going to go out and ride for three or four hours. And that is the extreme that's going beyond health, which is what we're talking about. But probably half the time I would go back to bed. But if I knew that there was somebody there <laughs> waiting for me, and that can either be a workout partner that you meet to walk with, or in your case, when you do group exercise classes, if you're a regular, you kind of know if you skip a week or so and you come back, the instructor or some of the other people taking the class are going to say, hey, Liz, where were you? Are you slacking off? That's you know, right. Is, anything, is there everything, any, everything okay? What can I do to help? So figure out a way to hold yourself accountable. As I've gotten older, what holds me accountable is I have two dogs. So my Labradors like to go outside, they like to walk and run, and they especially like it when the weather's cold. So here up in, near Pittsburgh, we have winter, unlike you down in Florida. And when it's 15 or 20 degrees, Ooh, that would be- you still fine. go out? Seriously? I still, I still go out. <gasps> and, act, and actually, the funny thing is, if it's 10 degrees or so, that's the favorite time for the Labradors. So that's the time when I would be less likely to go out because, oh, it's too cold. But I find if you get out for 10 or 15 minutes and you have the proper clothing, you finish just like when you go to one of those exercise classes, if you've had a busy day and just say, I just want to stay home and have a glass of wine, you find you enjoy it. So figuring out how you want to be held accountable is important. And then two other tips that I would add is, as you mentioned, mix it up. So maybe not initially, Maybe just initially say, I'm going to take a walk or I'm going to do something for 20 minutes, three days a week. And just do that religiously, no matter how busy your schedule is. Uh, and then after you've done that, say, okay, what could I maybe add to this? And one of the things I think is great as somebody who works as a personal trainer and teaches people who are either personal trainers or become personal trainers, don't hesitate to maybe buy yourself a couple of sessions with a personal trainer. It doesn't mean you always have to work out with a personal trainer. That's a good idea, right? Especially again, for people who, who need motivation, because some people do need a, a push. They need to be pushed, especially at the beginning, right? Just to kind of get them, I call it rolling, <laughs> you know, and once That's, they're rolling, they, they, they get, you know, they get excited about it because I think one thing I wanted to share real quick, and, and sorry to interrupt there, but I think that one of the things that people don't realize, and I'll tell you because I started working out for the past almost seven years now, and I'm very, very excited about it. And it was a change that I had to make also because I always came up with excuses. Always. Why? Especially my favorite, I don't have the time. I just don't have the time. Of course, I was not making the time for it, and that was the truth. So I think it's important that when we add routines to our life, that we are consistent of doing these things too. The same thing as I wake up in the morning, I like my cup of coffee. I have to have my coffee. It is a routine. It's a lifetime routine. And I realized that after, you know, spending so many years working, you know, for myself that I guess I spend a lot of hours behind my computer, right? And I was like, oh my God, I'm not even doing anything physically to help my body. What's going on? So for me, it was a rude awakening finding myself that I want to travel. Actually, I travel in Europe and I spent like 15 days and that was a very frustrating time for me. And the reason I'm sharing this is because I was in so much pain because I had to walk it up the stairs and down the stairs. That's why I was so frustrated because I realized, my God, I'm out of shape and I'm not that old. And I feel really bad that I could not keep up with other people who were even older, but they were better shit than I was. And that's when it really hit me. So sometimes we need to have points in our life that hits us really hard to understand that it's a necessity that we have to keep moving um, to keep our bodies in good shape and, and you know, strong. So continue. <laughs> so. And that's, that's a great point. It's not only so you're in shape so you can go on vacation this year or next year, but whatever you're doing to become more physically fit, it's kind of like uh, 
energy in the bank for 10, 15, 20, 30 years from now. So then your kids or your grandkids or whatever you are, you can be 70 or 80 years old, still doing what you want to do rather than saying, boy, I'd really like to go to Europe. But when I went five years ago, I hurt. So I think, you know, a little bit of exercise goes a long way. And if you find, if you just budget in two or three times a week, 20 to 30 minutes, that's a start. The other thing that people forget about when they don't exercise is it really helps your mental acuity. So I find some of my best ideas come when I'm out running with the dogs or riding a bike because that's kind of my stress relief. I can't think about work that much or I can, but you know, I can look around, I can concentrate. And sometimes just uh, subconsciously, it's like, ooh, this is a really good idea. So for my podcasts, I came up with the idea for the podcast on a run. Ah. For some of my guests, you know, I'll be on a, a run and I'll be thinking, it's like, man, I know this guy or I know this lady and they'd be a great guest on the podcast. Uh, and sometimes the idea is just of various things to do like that come on that. So you, it really helps if you're an entrepreneur or somebody who's involved in a really intellectual profession. It really helps with stimulating brain thought because you are kind of turning your brain off or saying this is my stress relief. But at the same time, you'll find ideas come up. It's like, oh, that's a good idea. The other no. thing that I think, oops, I'm sorry, go ahead. That's okay. Yeah, I agree with you. And like I said, I, and, and that's why I, I share my story because it's the truth. I mean, I, I, I felt at my one point in my life when I did that wonderful trip, uh, it was an amazing experience, but I felt very upset at myself. I, I kind of felt disappointed that, uh, you know, being as young as, I still am, <laughs> you know, I could not keep up with other people who were older than me. And I was kind of embarrassed because I was in pain. I mean, my legs were in pain, my muscles. I was aching and I said, how could this be possible? And I said, I'm going to do something to change this. And I did. And it's been over seven years. And again, going back, I started once a week and then I started increasing and I'm doing it three times a week now, religiously. Like you said, it became a routine part of my life. There's no excuses. There's no if, no buts, nothing. I have to do what I have to do. And again, for me, my motivation is sometimes I like just, you know, lifting weights. And other times I like to be part of a group and doing classes. So I think it was a good point that you brought that up. Do something that you really can enjoy, especially at the beginning. And then from there, maybe just keep adding different things because sometimes it kind of gets boring, you know, doing the same thing. And I think another thing to keep in mind is everybody is busy. So figure out what you can do to add extra motion into your life. Uh, I know I interviewed a physician for one of my podcasts and he's in a two, uh, two physician practice out in the Seattle area. And okay. in his office, he has some hand weights. He has a chin up bar. So he says, you know, sometimes between patients, <laughs> I go in and I do a set of push-ups or I do a set, a set of chin-ups. I love it. He had a great idea. When I asked him to be on his podcast, he said, can I take a walk while we interview? He said, I don't talk on the phone unless I'm walking. I like he, that. He picks times to get his activity in, not just calling it a workout. So if you go to the shopping mall or you go to the supermarket, park a little farther away. If you're on vacation, don't take the elevator all the time. A lot of times you have to take the elevator to go up to your hotel room, but you can find those stairs at either end of the hall or the middle, and you can walk to 17 or 18 floors down to the hotel lobby. So even if you're really enjoying and splurging a little bit on vacation with the wine and the desserts and the rich foods, you can still add in extra activity and just make it a habit rather than saying, okay, I'm going to work out. You say, okay, I'm going to work out but all these other little micro activity times throughout the day. The final thing that I'm really passionate about, if it's possible to do, and you'll notice me on this podcast, if you're watching this on video, is I'm kind of shifting around and moving. It's not because I'm shifty. I'm actually at a standing desk and I'm on a wobble board. Is that right? Show so, it. I want to see it. Come on, put down the camera. <laughs> that way, at least for the ones who are watching through the YouTube, we can see this. Ah, he's showing it on screen. That is funny. Look at that. You are. So this, is, this is actually a, a funny story. This is actually. So tell us a little bit about that. I mean, I, 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 <laughs> I am not, I am not getting any money for this. This is a Pona Ona board. So it's a wobble board that has inflatable balls on all four sides. I had a more traditional wobble board. I'll disappear for just a second here. What's the benefit of the wobble board? Please explain. <laughs> 
I will. So I've actually only had this for three or four days. I had other traditional wobble boards, but at my feet right now is one of my Labradors sleeping. And with the more traditional wobble boards, I was worried about wobbling and kind of clipping her nose or clipping her paws. So this one is supported in the air. Okay. <laughs> but the reason for the wobble board is if you sit at a desk all day or if you stand, because a lot of people say, well, I stand at a standing desk, you end up locked in one position. Or maybe you shift into one position and you just hold there and it's a static motion. If I'm on the wobble board, if I'm typing on the computer or if I'm talking to you, I can kind of shift around. Here I am on the wobble board. I can bounce up and down a little bit. I'm getting a little bit of movements. Sometimes I can balance on one leg, which you can't see. So all I'm doing is making my muscles active and moving. Now, in the whole scheme of things, does it make a huge difference in the number of calories I burn? No. But it makes me much more cal uh, much more mobile. It makes me much less likely to be stiff because I'm the person who's going to slump in the desk, go down like that. And then I'm going to finish my day of work or finish a couple of hours and really be uncomfortable. The other thing I like about this is when I start to get uncomfortable with my standing and my moving around, it's kind of a built in, Hey, I need to take a break, maybe take a quick walk. I work from home, maybe go downstairs and get an espresso or just not focus in for three or four hours without moving. Dr. Espresso sounds like a good plan. <laughs> that's a good excuse to take a break. There you go. Uh, exactly. You know, that's really interesting. Now, how long have you, because how long have you been doing, I mean, actually using the wobble board and, and what are the breaks that you need to take in between? Because you're standing there, like you said, it's, it's really being active because your muscles are being active as you're standing, right? I started, um, I started with a, a, a standing desk about four years ago. It's a, little, it's a device. The company is called Veradesk. There's a number of them out there you can get on Amazon. And this is just a device that sits on top of a regular desk and you can adjust it up and down. And my idea was I was going to spend part of the day sitting and part of the day standing. Four years ago, I haven't put it down and sat down yet, but after using it for about three or four months, I realized, you know, if I worked for two or three hours, my legs were really sore because I had the tendency to stand there with my knees locked. So I, uh -huh. started to think, I see. Okay. How can I move around more? And as somebody who came from the rehab background in physical therapy, if any of your listeners have gone to physical therapy, you've probably been on some sort of a wobble board or a balance board. So... I actually saw a project uh, on Indiegogo. There was a fluid stance wobble board where the gentleman designed it just for the desks. And as a gadget geek, I funded it on Indiegogo and I used that. And if anybody from fluid stance is listening, I love your product. The problem is I'm not using it right now because I don't want to pinch my dog's paws. <laughs> but what it does is that I can just move around a little bit. And I've actually modified it a little bit uh, when I, first bought the fluid stance, they sold a uh, thin rubber pad that goes on top of it. So I'm standing on wood that's on little air balls and there are little, uh, there's a little bit of padding. So it's quite comfortable. It's almost like standing on one of those pads in your kitchen if you're a cook, where you can get those padded floor mats so that you're not standing on the tile. So you have sort of like a little cushion there between the floor, right? I see how you, yeah. I'm bouncing, I'm bouncing, bouncing up and down on the yeah. little air balls. Uh -huh. uh, now, how, I guess like anything else, you have to get used to it, right? Um, you have to get used to it. I mean, when I started out, I probably stood for 10 or 15 minutes, walked downstairs, walked upstairs. Now, you know, we'll talk for 30, 45 minutes. I'll be on it. Um, and I'll be shifting my position, you know, one foot, the other foot. If I'm not on video, I may, be, may do little baby squats where I disappear out of sight. <laughs> Just any, anything That's to good. stay moving. Um, and if somebody's watching on video and we hadn't been talking about they See, I'm doing boy, it too, but I'm sitting. Right. I'm going sideways from one side to another. <laughs> so I'm the, I'm the fidgety person. If I go to a conference, I'm the person who stands in the back because I found if I stay in one position, and part of it is I've, as I've gotten older, I've got some degenerative joint disease in my back. I've got some herniated discs. It's like oh, the no. more I move, the better I feel. And I found when I'm sore, if I make myself move, I feel better. So it really hits the ethos of what I said at the beginning of the podcast. Movement is part of what makes your life complete, even if you don't go out for a run. And again, let's talk a little bit more also in, in the medical you know, terminology. The benefits we know already of you know, working out, we need to move our bodies, it's good for our organs, it's good for our muscles, for our joints. Mm -hmm. But people don't realize that we, uh, and some have, but 
I think that some people don't that bone density is something that we lose with time too. And exercising can actually help improve bone density. Is that correct? Or correct me here if I'm wrong, doctor. It, it, it is in some, in some instances. What it can okay. do at worst is it can stop the loss of bone density. That, that's even good. Just at, the stopping is good. <laughs> at best, I've had a couple of clients who started exercising in their 50s and had some osteoporosis or osteopenia and started doing regular exercise and their bone scans would change and be more positive. So weight bearing is really good. You know, walking, uh, the step aerobics classes they have. I know they have uh, rebounding classes where you can go up and down on trampolines. And also, you, you mentioned this at the beginning, if you make the commitment to do this for your health, get skilled or do something where you're doing some sort of resistance training, strength training, even if it's only body weight, push-ups, sit-ups. Again, as somebody in the, in the uh, field, I pick and choose my times. So I've actually got a selection of kettlebells, which is a type of weight, tra uh, weight training device. Most of them I bought on Craigslist, but they're out of my patio. So when I let the dogs out and the dogs are taking their time to do what dogs like to do, right. do kettlebell swings or I do some other things, again, just picking little moments in the day where saying, hey, I'm going to be more active. And, you know, something I want to bring on is, is that neither you or, or, or myself, I mean, we're not, you know, physically, you know, like, you know, kind of uh, what they call it a uh, you know a uh, big bulky person or trainers here so i mean it's when we talk about you know uh, exercise it's what's going to make you feel comfortable in your body because i think a lot of times when people hear the word exercise the first thing that comes to our minds is that perfect body mm -hmm. right and, and that's really important to touch base that because what we're talking about is very different. We're not talking about here we're going to go in competition or we're going to go to, you know, a show or anything like that. It's just maintaining our bodies healthy because it's a necessity, including if you have limitations, like you said, doctor, because some people, like you said, maybe they had accidents, you know, or maybe they have health problems already. And, and if they're listening to this, there's so many things you can do. I mean, what about the pool? The pool is a phenomenal place that you can exercise people who have problems already or they're a little bit older in age and maybe they don't want to expose their body for a big impact like running or mm -hmm. bicycle but the pool explain the benefit of that because that, that's i think that's superior for people who might be a little bit older or have a health condition the benefit of, of the pool can be for some individuals if they happen to have uh asthma the moisture water may potentially or the air the moisture air in the pool may help um, it's a whole body exercise if they're doing swimming or a water aerobics class. Again, it has that benefit of a community or somebody, if they're doing a class of other people holding them accountable. And in some instances, they may have degenerative joint diseases where they're trying to avoid putting overdue stress on the back or maybe the hips or the, or the knees. We all know somebody who's had a hip replacement probably. And in some instances, if they're trying to delay that time period before they have to have the replacement, they don't want that pounding, as you mentioned. So going in the pool, they can get the cardiovascular effect. And then by doing some sort of resistance training or weight training, they can strengthen the muscles and that puts less stress on the joint. Very, very, very good. And I, that, again, this is why I, I want to keep bringing it up. Um, really, we, we are the ones who put up excuses in our lives to why we cannot do something. Um, because, again, this is not about competing. This is not about going out there and saying who's the stronger, who's the, you know, the most fit or firm body. We're talking about just for our own good health that this is part of us, our, you know, anatomy, we have to exercise. Our body requires to do something physically beyond just eating and walking and doing the, the minimal things that we do in this day, especially I think in certain places like where we live, where we have to have a car to drive everywhere because everything is so far away. Mm -hmm. um, and for those who, who, who are probably from other countries who might be listen to us, even big cities like New York that I'm originally from, I mean, you really don't need a car. I mean, you can walk around, you can go to the store, you can, you know, so you have more movement physically, you're more active. Um, mm -hmm. But places like other states, I mean, you have to have a car because it's this is so, you know, far that it's hard to walk, you know. Um, but again, like you said, doctors, about getting to a routine, just not giving up, 
and keep trying and keep trying. One last thing I wanted to touch uh, uh, with you, and I think it's really important, is a posture. Posture is very important because a lot of times, like you said, we have a tendency when we're sitting on our chairs to kind of curve our back. And every time it's closer and closer to the monitor, like I'm doing right now, right? And next thing you know, like your face is right in front of the monitor. You're like, oh my God, what's, what's going on here? Um, how can we improve a, 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 you know, a posture when it comes even to walking? Besides, is there any certain exercises that you might be able to recommend for, especially for, like I said, our folks out there who spend so many hours behind the computer working long hours? I think the number one thing to do is don't spend too much time in that one position. And I think kind of inadvertently, that's why I switched to the standing desk. So there are programs you can buy for your computer or they're even free where they basically tell you every 15 minutes to stop or every 30 minutes to stop. You can set it and some of them actually have little exercise videos that pop up on the screen. But the goal is one of the things uh, to always remember about exercise is your body is a plastic tissue or the plastic tissue. So what it means is it adapts. If you don't move, your muscles will atrophy, you'll get weaker, the joints won't move as well. If you move on a regular basis, the muscles have a tendency to work better, including something we haven't even touched on, our mental acuity or our ability to think, which if we're entrepreneurs, if we're business people, if we, have, if we have kids that we need to keep up with them because we need to figure out how to do their homework, especially if it's math homework, Ooh. being active... <laughs> <laughs> Being active can help that. So I think as far as posture related things, set a timer, even as if it's buying a little egg timer that's good for five minutes. And even if you have to sit at a desk or sit at a meeting, kind of pause for a second, take 15 to 20 minutes or sorry, 15 to 20 seconds and just do something. Either get up, walk around the office, get a drink, sit up straight, shrug your shoulders, just something so you're not sitting in a, or standing in a static Yeah, even just more little like exercises like these, right? Where you go back and forth with your shoulders and little stretching like we do, right? And, but anything so you're not just sitting there typing without moving for 15 or 20 minutes. Right, and, then, and I'm doing right now on the camera, see? <laughs> so, exactly. I mean, just little things that really does help. And, and I do, and plus, you know, also it's like um, a stress releaser, right? It kind of mm -hmm. just kind of makes you more um, uh, just to feel better with your body because it's stiffness. Sometimes you feel like you're stiff, you know, when you're in a, in a position for too long, it's like you're starting to feel that kind of pain, right? So that's a good sign. So you're right, there's plenty of softwares or um, even your smartphone. I mean, you can get yeah. your smartphone and set up yourself maybe if it's not, you know, at least every, I don't know, two hours. You know, get up, even if it's only a five-minute break. Who cares? But it's five minutes, stand up, mm -hmm. run, jump, whatever it is physically that you're going to break that, you know, uh, uh, you know, sedative, you know, position that you're having. So that is very, very, very good. Um, you know, doctors, it's been a pleasure to have you. And, and you know what? I, I just, like I always say, in my podcast, and I'm sure you're doing the same with yours, and, um, you know, we just – as entrepreneurs, we need to do certain things to keep ourselves healthy, not only mentally, but physically, and things that, uh, you know, just to improve our health, because like you said, it affects our, our brain, it affects our mind. So if we have a physical, you know, um, routine, it's going to help us to have a clear, you know, uh, 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 thinking, and we really all need that, we really do. Um, so anything else that you would like to kind of touch base before uh, we wrap up the, the episode? And by the way, how can the audience reach you? Again, mention your podcast for people who might be looking into getting more to tips of other things that I'm sure you share along your um, you know, podcast, please. We have two podcasts. We have FitLab PGH, which you can find it by F-A-T, I'm sorry, F-I-T-L-A-B-P-G-H.com. Okay. And we also have a second podcast, Moving to Live, M-O-V-I-N-G, number two, L-I-V-E dot com. You can, if you get on one of them, you can find the other one. The ethos of those and kind of what my life has turned out to being is movement is part of what makes your life complete. Think about it. If you're not somebody like Liz and myself who enjoys moving, think of it as part of your medicine that you have to take so that you can do the things that you want to do. And so that if you're fortunate enough to live for 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years, depending on your age, you can do whatever you want to do, not just now, but down the line. So you're kind of putting 
movement in the bank so you can move later in life. And if you treat it that way and take it just like you would take paying for your car insurance, eating a meal every day, then it becomes a habit and the benefits probably will exceed the time that you spend doing it. And, and th- something we did not touch pre- before we actually end, it's, it's um, nutrition, uh, food, right? Um, so when we start a new workout, let's say someone who's listening, because the ones that really are in the habit like us, they already know that, hey, there's certain things that we know we should not eat. I mean, I still do it. I admit it, you know, I'm a chocoholic, <laughs> you know. Um, but again, uh, I'm not going to have a whole chocolate bar. I'm just going to have one or two pieces. So these are little things that we can do to reduce our calories, right, and certain foods that we know that, unfortunately, our body just does not digest. That's where the problem is. So uh, can you touch just real quick, somebody who's just starting, what can they do, cut down on sugars? What things can they really, they can start seeing improvement as they're starting to get into the habit and the routine of working out? So there we go. <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not a registered dietitian, but I can offer a few tips. The first thing I would say, if somebody's serious about it, buy yourself one or two sessions with a registered dietitian. That's have, a great idea. We mm-hmm. have somebody here in Pittsburgh who I believe she also does uh, virtual, like we're having a virtual conversation. Her name is Leslie Bonsi. Okay. And the benefit of somebody like this, I know there's people in South Florida. I just mentioned Leslie because I interviewed her for a podcast. They give you the tools and the good, the good dietitians aren't going to say good food, bad food. It's just like you said, in moderation. So that's important. They can give you the tools before that. Think about what you eat. The more processed the food is that you eat, probably the worst it is for you. And the other thing to remember, unless you're working out really, really hard, you don't need a lot of sugar in your diet. So I'm fortunate enough, I have an espresso machine at my house. I like straight espresso. Me too. (laughs) When I I go and I travel and I go to a a Starbucks or hopefully a a locally owned coffee shop and I order my quad or six espresso because I have two or three double espressos a day. Is that right? Oh my goodness. Usually usually the barista, if they're real coffee people, look at me and go, oh, well here, you want to try this stuff. And if they're not, they look at me and say, well, Don't you want some sugar or something? So, so many of these things that we eat, the coffee that we drink has so much sugar in it and we really don't need that. And then people say, well, I eat really well. And you look at what they eat and they're doing a double chocolate mocha frappuccino (laughs) that that has more sugar in it than a piece of chocolate cake. Isn't that true? And you know, and here's one point, which is really good where you just kind of brought up because I just recently discovered that actually espresso has less caffeine than American coffee. And I wanted to share that with the audience and in case they, maybe they're not, they're not aware because I just came across this, you know, uh, information. I was really surprised. I would think there was the opposite because other ones more concentrated, but it's not. Uh, and again, you're right. A lot of people putting those creamers on, people please keep away from those. They have corn syrup. You know, really, I mean, it's better drink it black or add some brown sugar to it if you want, but keep away from those because the creamers are coming fully loaded with sugars and special corn syrup, which is not good for your health and your body. Exactly. And you, you hit on the espresso. Everybody hears that I have two or three double espressos and they go, wow, that's a <laughs> lot of caffeine. But as you said, it actually probably has about the same amount of caffeine as 12 to 16 ounces of a Starbucks coffee because wow. the, the water spends less time in contact with the coffee grounds. So you get that really deep, rich flavor that you and I really enjoy, mm-hmm. but it's got less caffeine. So one could almost argue that it's a health food. Thank you. <laughs> We just came up with an excuse why we should drink more espresso now. So for those coffee lovers, now they're going to be saying, all right, now I need to have more. I'm going to have a double and a triple shot of coffee in espresso. So that's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Ben. Really, uh, you know, your, your tips have been very, very helpful. And I hope, like I said, the intentions of all these episodes as I bring the experts is to really help, the, you know, the audience. And again, I care for your health because the healthier we are, the stronger we are the better we can serve not only our clients for being around our families for longer and sharing, you know, uh, precious time, which is what matters most, you know, in a lifetime. So thank you. Thank you, doctor. I really appreciate your time. And, and again, I hope we stay in touch. And, uh, and again, any other uh, uh, website or anything in case, because you do virtual, you say, um, 
training, do you offer that besides the university where you're teaching as a professor or do you also do it for other individual clients? I do a little bit of individual. I do uh, six to eight hours a week of individual training with clients. Okay. Good, good, good so, to know. Do you, do you have a website or anything else so that you can reach you out through the podcast channel? That's can, it. The best way, if they go to either the FitLab PGH site or the Moving to, we Moving to Live site, there are email, under uh, About Us, there's contact information. You can email, email me, and I'm uh, very good at responding to emails. And, again, and to end up already finally with the episode, thank you so much. And again, coffee lovers, no problem. Drink your espresso. <laughs> and anyhow, they say there's a lot of good things out of coffee. Coffee bean is good for your health, for your heart. <laughs> so anyhow, folks, thank you so much. And into the next episode, I wish you a lot of success, everyone. And we stay in touch. Thank you, doctor. You have a terrific day, okay? Thank you.